Koshi, welcome Hi, to the podcast, my friend. Cheers for having me on, mate. Cheers for having me on. I've been yeah. keeping an eye on it and all that, and uh, it's nice to be invited on, mate. Ah, of course, mate. Of course. Fucking living the dream. What sort of no, fucking time mate. do you call this? Mate, I know it's, it's <laughs> time, isn't it? I'm having a barbecue this afternoon, so this worked well for me. <laughs> yeah, that's good, mate. That's good. Love all that. So, you're not out in the field today, then? No, I'm, out, I'm back out on Monday, mate. I'm back out on Monday. It's my first day off today, and I try and uh, keep my weekends back for the missus. So I'm on. Uh, I'm out well, on Monday. You absolute gent, mate. Well, I've, I work like four days on, four days off, mate. So my shift pattern changes every week. Oh yeah. So I don't always get my weekends off. So it's like quite rare that I get full weekends. But yeah. So it's the, the, fun, it's it the is, dream. It is, mate. So is the bushcraft stuff your job now, or is that just a extra bushcraft- hobby? It's just a passion, mate. Like it's a bit of um, it's a bit of a release for me, man. Like it's my like happy place, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Well, for those that don't know you, obviously you do the bushcraft stuff, which we'll get into. But obviously, yeah. former RF regiment sniper, Ali yeah. bastard, Ali. <laughs> we'll get some shit for that. I don't give a fuck anymore. Um, uh, yeah, mate. Don't care. Yeah, so we we were on fifteen together, and I, I remember you always having a a, a passion to try and become a sniper because when we first met obviously you don't you have to do the course and whatnot that runs yeah. in your family though doesn't it the sniping when you're yeah. old man a sniper. Yeah. yeah he used to be um he used to be the, the sergeant up at sniper school not he was gone by the time i got there but um i used to remember as a kid him coming home with like the uh observation sheets that all the students yeah, yeah. have been doing he'd, he'd be marking them at the dining room table mate and i'd see like the drawings and i was I used to think that was really cool and yeah. uh obviously everyone sort of well not everyone but look, most people look up to their dads mate do you know what i mean so i was a bit like that's what i want to do it's, it's like an unwritten rule in it you have to you have to look up to the old man yeah but... which didn't, it didn't help in basics though man like they used to come into the Come into your room, mate. Straight for me, straight to my locker. Shit tied in knots, whether it, <laughs> whether it was good or not. Because I think everyone was like, oh, "You might get an easy time." If anything, I was like picked yeah. on more. You know what I mean, it's it's mad that people think that. That I know, I know. It's you, crazy. You, man. It's like it's not like any other job. Like in the military, you're going to probably get singled out more if your mm. old man was serving. Because obviously, you got the the brown fire team. I don't think they. I don't think they got any special treatment. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, I, come, for me as well. Like you know, I came from a, a military background with my old man. Um, yeah. He 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 was he really wanted me to become a PTI, and I fucked I fucked the aptitude test up, mate. I was dog shit. Yeah. And uh, when I told him I was uh, going to join the regiment, he was like, "Any chance you're getting a trade boy?" And I was like, "Nah, I think I, I think I'll try. I think I'll try the infantry." He was like like hands up in the air but as soon as, <laughs> but his face during um my pass out I, I remember seeing him and I, it, he was just fucking beaming like yeah oh i bet dead proud yeah it was it's always good mate what was your dad what did your dad do my dad was a uh, pji a uh, jump it? instructor yeah, yeah so he, <laughs> he he was always like are you going to retrade are you going to retrade i was like i might but every time i was like thinking about it we'd go off and, and go on tour or, or start pre-deployment. And I was like, I'm actually enjoying it. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, but one of the, I've, I've always wanted a parachute, like seeing me old, like, like similar to you, like uh, obviously your dad coming home with all the, the sniping stuff. My old man would have his jump logs out and, and things like that. We'd go off. He, he would take um, civvy um, parachute uh, jumping in Gloucester and he would take me and my yeah. brother along. We'd watch his, his demos. And I was like, oh, I fucking really want to jump. I really want to jump. Never got the opportunity. And when, I finally, when I finally got put on a um, just a, a jumps carder thing, um, yeah. just a bit of AT, I was like, oh, fucking finally. Yeah. Then my eldest was born. And I had to go and fucking deal with that. I was like, oh. You it's always- pencil this in, mate. I think you've... You've got a goal there still that you need to tick off, mate. Yeah, I know. I definitely need to. And my missus is always like, well, why don't you do a tandem? It's like, I don't want to do a tandem. I, I don't want to be attached to somebody else doing all the work. I you want should, to do it. Uh, you should get back in touch with Joe Becker because he's done his full licence and all that. He's a legend, he. 
Yeah, big, well, big been on as well, hasn't he? he has, mate. He uh, he was on the Remembrance Day uh, special, you might want to call it. Yeah, that was a Anyone that know, Joe, Joe and I were a sniper pair together. We were done the our Afghan tours together, and that. Yeah, how many how many, how many tours did you end up doing? I did Herrick seventeen and Herrick twenty. So you did the the closing down one, is that right? Yeah, I was yeah. too um, I was too young for Kandahar. Because I got on squadron, yes, and you literally did. Within two months, you boys all left, and uh, I was basically stuck behind. And I remember one of the bosses just being like, "Oh, we'll get you out there. We'll get you out there." And then the tour, <laughs> yeah, it got the cut short. Got yeah, cut four months or something. So I kind of missed out on that. Yeah, yeah. The, the Kandahar tour was all right. It was, it was good. Um, but yeah, it got cut short because we were handing over to the to the Yanks. Um, yeah. But yeah, obviously, when uh, when Joe was on, he was talking about um, a few of the different um, contacts and what had you uh, when you were out in in Bastion. And, yeah, uh, that, was, um, that was a good period. Well, it was good and bad period of time because we got we were just attached to the US Marines at their little patrol base, Boldak, for like a good six weeks or so. And that was mega man. That was like just going out with them every day and overwatching them and stuff like that. So it was good to see like. How them boys do it as well, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, I tell you what, it is strange working with the with the Marines because obviously that's one of their their elite sort of forces, yeah. the US Marines, and they're just a different a different fucking specimen of human. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're fucking not normal, mate. Hello, hello. But there's some nice blokes there, man. Like <clears throat> one of them would be going back to like Bastion, and I'd say, "Oh, mate, just grab me like a can of monster or something like that. That'd be awesome." And he'll come back, mate, with like a crate of monster, a crate of this, like have this, have that, and I'll be like, "Oh, dude, just like a tin of monsters, fine." And he's like, "Nah, <laughs> nah, man, take the luck, take the luck." <laughs> yeah, they, they are. Be. They are generous, like they are. They're yeah, fucking really bonkers, cool. but they're generous. And I always remember because obviously I was. Um, in the sea jock, which everyone tries to give me shit for, which is funny. Um, and they loved our mess food. Yeah. They love yeah. to go to our, so if I was going to our mess to pick up some fucking dinners and whatnot for, for everybody else, they were like, Tomo, can you grab me some fucking whatever? <laughs> yeah. cottage, some cottage pie. It's like, what? But, but we always like theirs. Their yeah. fucking mess was better. Like, yeah, fucking, man. It's a weird thing, isn't it? Like all the countries, just like everyone yeah. else. Suppose you get so so used to what like we've got. And, yeah, um, definitely. But like down at Boldak, they had this um, refrigerated like shipping container, like a reefer, and uh, they had like on every Wednesday, without fail, they had this like twenty vehicle convoy come down to Boldak with like milkshakes, Dr Pepper. <laughs> the yaks. They don't fuck stay. about that. And uh, we had like a barbecue once a week down there, man. And it was always like, you could just look around and go, I could be anywhere in the world right now, you know, with your, yeah. with your lobster claws and your steak, man, a full surf and turf and all that. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, that was... But it's mad, awesome. isn't it? Because you, you have those moments. And I remember in Kandahar, we'd have similar sort of moments where you would have opportunities to have like a, a barbecue yeah. or someone's done cooking something on, a, on an open fire and, and what have you. Yeah, and you're cooking away and you're eating away and you're like, I'm in a fucking war zone. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Because literally, I think there was one day where there was a barbecue, and then like the next minute, we're all like running and jumping onto the Hesco Bastion. We had some like chatter basically that the Taliban were watching us. They were going to be putting an attack on this base, and I know there's a lot of that goes on anyway. But it, like your mood just switches, man. Yeah. One minute you think, oh, I could be anywhere, I'm enjoying the sun with my food. Next minute, just body armor on on the yeah. wall. Like, and I remember saying to um, uh, a previous guest, Al, and he was like, "What what was it like in in Iraq and Afghanistan when I when I went?" And I was like, "Even though the amount of stress that we were, we were under, I've never been so at peace as well." Yeah, like, I I spoke a lot about this with Keaters, you know, Michael Keatley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because and it's one of them, isn't it? Like when you're there, you want to be home, and then. There's a strange thing between lads when you get home. Like life was almost simple there. As long as your kit yeah. was packed and you're hydrated. Kit was packed, yeah, hydrated, ready to go. What else have you got to think about? Like your rifles clean, all that sort of and stuff. It, and it's amazing how like, like a good word there, that how how much simpler life is when that's literally all you need to worry about. Your kit, your rifle, yeah. hydrate, 
You don't have to be checking your fucking phone every two minutes. You're not worried about your missus phoning you up, giving you shit. No. There's no, even even the fact there's no TV, you literally either got your eye, eye, uh, eye fucking, what is it? <laughs> fucking iTunes, whatever. Yeah, or, yeah. Or your Walkman. Walkman, fucking old boy. Get your discman out. <laughs> yeah, get your discman out. You know what I mean? You, even, even down to the fact that sometimes you didn't even have a telly. Like, yeah. That's quite nice as well, isn't it? That is yeah, nice. It's just chilled, mate. It's a lot different to me. And yeah, we were saying, because me and Keaters always used to try and get on like the graveyard stag when we were out on the oh, ground. That's the best, morning. mate. Like, watch the sun come up and, you know, yeah. simple things like that, man. You'd like, you wouldn't even appreciate stuff like that a lot of the time here. But, you know, that, that simple way of life, it was like, you almost want to be back there sometimes. Yeah, I agree. And, and I think, that comes down to a lot of the things. I don't know how you felt when you left, but it's those little things that you sort of hold on to and the reason yeah. why you enjoyed the job so much. Yes, oh, yeah. the, the camaraderie and things like that, but it's like, oh, I remember being on stag looking up and I could see literally every star and it's fucking beautiful. Yeah. I'd love to be back out there. It's like loads of people have asked me before. They might have asked you, like, would you go back? It's like, yeah, I think I would. Yeah, no, I said the same, mate. I said the same to be fair. Like, I'm don't. I'm definitely glad I've done it. Obviously, I'm out now, like yourself. But yeah, there'll always be fond memories as well as bad, you know. Oh yeah, and and like we spoke with uh, when Joe was on, that you you um you had a a couple of bad experiences out there. One of them being with uh, uh one of the gunners that got hit by a was it a ricochet. Um, don't know if it was a ricochet or if it was a fucking dead shot or not. I think I think Joe said yeah. it was a ricochet. Yeah, he was told it was a ricochet because it was broken up into too many pieces. Yeah, um, but like, yeah, that, that that obviously wasn't a good time. Um, with all that, we were basically there was I think there was like a Danish there was like a Danish patrol out and within that area, uh, I think one of the two squadron lads was hit down there. So that's why they put us down there to try and find this sharpshooter or sniper yeah, yeah. or whatever they're calling him um so yeah and we were down there quite a lot and then obviously like you're in the same area a lot getting contacted a lot like the inevitable was going to happen yeah yeah and and it hit, hit the nail on the head there as well and you sort of think about little things within the chain of command it's like how many times are we going to go down there how many times are we going to do the same thing yeah. we've always t- we've always told even now when i do um when I talk to my officers uh, at work, I try and tell them to stop setting patterns. Yeah. You set patterns and people are going to know exactly what you're doing at what time. And yeah. we were always, it, the, us junior ranks and and those of us with no rank, we yeah. we, <laughs> we fucking knew that. You, you know yeah, not to, and you say, we've been here before. Yeah. And then, then Seven there's also times the, in a row. <laughs> there's also the issue with this is why you get like sergeants and stuff that really not fans of officers because they come out of train and jump straight on their first tour and like don't really think about this stuff, man. And like you say, there's loads of junior ranks that have done tours before and they know how the game works and stuff like that. And But you've just got to go along with what you're told. That that That's the shit thing is the going along with what you've been told. And I think 15 missed a step at, uh, during the Kandahar sort of, and then, the, the bastion tour the fact that they had a lot of young youngish to oldish sort of sergeants that yeah. hadn't done a tour in fucking god knows how long and like some i think a couple of them hadn't done a tour since like island <laughs> and they're trying to get that box tick to yeah they're one. getting that box tick so they can get promoted and it's like hang on a minute you're not listening to what we're we're saying yeah. we've literally just been there yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what do you do for work now then, Tom? I see you were saying you mentioned about your officers at work. Yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> someone's put me in charge. Um oh. I'm a I'm a site security manager. So yeah. there's a there's an That's area right. down here. I won't name the area because obviously I don't want to get shit through work. Yeah. And uh, I basically run the security team. I started off as a as a normal bod, worked my way up, as you do. But I've always, um, I, I struggled when I fucking left to, to settle. Um, yeah. I couldn't find a job that I uh, I really enjoyed until I did my surveillance work. 
when I did surveillance, that was be- that was fucking epic. Yeah. I'm actually I'm actually shocked that there aren't more snipers that come out of the military to do surveillance. Yeah, no, there was actually a talking point. I did think about doing it before I left, um, but it was a bit more of a scaled down version of that. I was looking at jobs within like the council that basically go and stake out people like claiming benefits. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did a similar sort of thing. Um, yeah, like, so I worked, for, I worked for a company called the Cotswold Group and they, yeah. uh, they basically are employed by insurance companies to go and spy on uh, benefit sheets. Yeah. Or insurance fraud, should I say, benefit sheets. Um, some of them, some of them, fucking. I, I mentioned a few in, in the in my book. Um, some of them were fucking brilliant to 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 watch. Others, yeah. as you as you would know, being a sniper, you just sat there for eight hours or whatever, doing <laughs> fuck all. But but the whole the whole thing behind it, you know, pimping out your fucking van so that it's all blacked out so nobody can see you. Yeah. And the fact that you're walking through public with a with a normal it's just a normal fucking video camera, yeah. All in these people and they have literally no clue. It's it's amazing. It's all like that. I bet you get a little buzz from that though, because that's the oh, sort yeah. of stuff I used to like used to sort of get me off a bit, man. Watching the same building like sell a like potential ID factory for like four days, mate. They're coming yeah. and going and moving their stuff in and out, and they have no idea that you're documenting all this. And yeah, yeah, it's 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 amazing how much it opens your eyes, mate. Yeah. Like, when, when I first started doing it, I was like, are they not going to know that I'm fucking here? Yeah. <laughs> but then you think, well, actually, there's loads of fucking vans parked on this road. Nobody's yeah. going to pay any attention to this one. Um, oh, so, so what, so you move companies from there, did you, to go? Or would you, uh, it- basically, they, they started messing me about and they started sending me all around the country. Like, yeah. and I, and I, that, that was one of the reasons why I left the military was the fact that I wanted yeah, to be cool. home with my kids. Yeah. So I then um, just left basically, and then just the the company I work for now is literally around the corner from my house, so yeah. it's a bit easier. But again, I, I started going through that unsettled phase. Yeah. When the when the the demons kick in and start saying I'm fucking, I'm nothing. I'm fucking all that sort of stuff. And that's when yeah. my depression and all that sort of fucking boosting again. I was like, oh, fuck's sake. Thought I got yeah. over. <laughs> I was kind of similar. It took um, the death of Simon Baldwin to make, to sort of flick that switch for me, man. Yeah. That was, that was a tough yeah. one, mate, for, for a lot yeah. of people, I think. Well, I, I, <clears throat> I'd done a electronics and electrical engineering apprenticeship when I left. Yeah. yeah. Cause I always liked working on my cars and bikes and stuff like that. And, I had a few mates that worked for British Sugar. And oh, yeah. uh, I kind of thought, oh, it'd be nice to get on the tools and do some, get a, get a trade, like you were saying earlier. Yeah. And um, I thought, oh, I want to be an engineer. One of the boys said, oh, go electrical, mate. Like, that's where the money's at, or that's where, like, you'll get picked up for better jobs and stuff. So I did. I applied for all these apprenticeships. And, like, that's another thing, man. It, when you're leaving, all the lads and the higher ranks are like, you don't want to leave, mate. There's no work out there. Like you, you'll struggle. You've got to yeah, yeah. work with that and the other, and like you're just saying, oh, fair enough. It might be, it might be like that, but I'll have to see for myself, mate. You can't just go on hearsay. And it's crazy how many jobs I got offered based just on the fact I had military experience. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like so I had, I had, it, a, I had my GCSEs from years ago, and that was it, mate. Like, oh, yeah, I've got my sniper. Well. Yeah, yeah, you find that a lot of um, companies actually just they do their whole. Oh, have you got your GCSEs? They're not looking yeah. for that though. They, they yeah. like they like um, police, military, fucking yeah. uh, sort of backgrounds because you have that work ethic. Yeah, um, that's it. And yeah, I know exactly what, what you mean there, mate. I remember when I first told uh, Sergeant Brown that I was putting my um, stuff in, but a lot of people were shocked because yeah. I was always going to be a fucking lifer because I was fucking regiment tattoo, all yeah. that sort of stuff. And to be fair, in my head, I was until I saw my missus going on a fucking downward spiral and her mental health was going a bit crazy. And I thought, if I stay in, I'm either I'll just be a single bloke if I stay in because yeah. my yeah. marriage will go down the pan. Yeah. And I was like, I can't have that. Um, but yeah, when I was getting ready to go, they were like, so Tom, what are you going to do? There's no jobs out there. I went, the fuck it is. When I work for Tesco if I have to. 
there yeah. are jobs out there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But the one thing that I, I was actually really annoyed with looking back now is the fact that nobody within the resettlement like said yeah. to me, like SAC Thompson, would you like to go and try out for these sort of gas, electric, trade, yeah. mechanical, all that sort of stuff? Because I went in and went, oh, I'll do close protection. Yeah. And they went, yeah, okay, cool. It's like, all right, brilliant. <laughs> and I did that, and I haven't used it, apart from my surveillance, because yeah. my, my course was um, close protection and surveillance, so I did end up using my surveillance qualification. Okay. But the close protection, like... I've 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 been on the verge of doing a few jobs because the old man's on the circuit. But other than that, yeah, it's it's harder to get on the circuit than it is to get a fucking actual job. There's no real guidance there. You get your learning yeah. credits or like Bollocks. the resettlement, but no, there's no. Oh, what do you, you? There should be like some sort of meeting. Like, what are you into? What would you like yeah. to do? Some sort of assistance. It's a bit like, well, here you go. <laughs> like, see it's, you it's, it's, it's it's a bit like yeah. You're, oh, so you're leaving? Yeah, cool. See you later, mate. Like, oh. like the, stereo, the stereotype of everyone like in the infantry or whatever being a bit like thick as shit yeah. uh, <laughs> that's like if you really are like that mate there's no help and no guidance to no. like see you on to Simi Street it's just like cheers for your service out the door bye yeah exactly it's fucking something needs oh, to be done about that and yeah. also coincide with that no, nobody actually sits down with you afterwards or, or during your resettlement thing to go, are you okay, by the way? Yeah. Oh, no, not... <laughs> How many tours have you done? Oh, I've done three tours. Are you Are you sure you're all right? Yeah, you're all right. Because like... I'm, I'm aware that you're in the Raff Reg and you either stick a mortar up your ass or or you're watching a fence line, which makes me <laughs> every time. Why yeah, do you no, watch a fence no. line, you fucking idiots? But, it, it's, it's, <laughs> but, um... but yeah, it's there's none of that. Do you need to have a bit of a chat with the with the fucking padre or yeah, anything like that? Yeah. Just to, there's no there's there you go. There's no mental health like check to tick yeah. off. You do your no, medical, no. but there's yeah. nothing to do with your noggin. Uh, it might be different now, man. We've it been out for like, a could be. now. Um, well, yeah, I've been out longer than I've been in now, so we. Well, I'm coming up to that. <laughs> I think next so well, I've been out as long as I've been in, which yeah. is crazy. It feels like. This is the thing. Like, yeah. Military is never going to leave you, is it, man? Let's no. be honest. Like we're no. always going to think like soldiers, I guess, because I still do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I obviously started doing my electronics, electrical engineering apprenticeship. It was like a college one day a week thing, um, but I was working for the other four days a week, and then obviously the suicide of Sai kind of like flicked a switch in me, man, and I just stopped caring about anything really. I started to become real snappy, real aggressive. Yeah, lack of motivation was like a big one that I've been struggling with for like the past few years until I started doing the bushcraft and the YouTube and the Instagram and stuff like that. Because I'm quite a closed off person, I love my own company. I like hang around on my own. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was like purposely disconnecting myself from everyone around me. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I was like this man. Like, yeah, just I, I, know, I know exactly the, the feelings, mate. I know just exactly. Doing, yeah, and I couldn't be bothered, mate. And then like, I stopped even caring about my apprenticeship. I was like scraping passes, mate. Just, just to be like, well, if I get qualified, I'm qualified. I don't care about like striving to be the best. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just go, going with emotions, man. And like, I just got to a point where I, I was I but I had to get some help, mate. I started doing these like webcam sessions with a really good charity called Veterans at Ease. My dad put me onto them, funnily enough, because I had a bit of a like a breakdown at my grandma's funeral with my mum and we fell out and it was just an awful time. And that basically just gave me the kick up the ass to say, mate, you need to like get yeah. some help. Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing when as soon as you get that, there's that moment of clarity when you're like, fuck, there is something not right here. Yeah, and and it's that it's that old saying, isn't it? It's it's blokes tend to not be afraid to talk about it, but it's like, no, I'll deal with this myself. Yeah, that was that was me as well. That yeah, was me. Exactly the same. And but it's, you don't realise the knock-on effect it has with other on people. on it. Yeah, on everyone. I was like, I was getting into arguments at work, man, over nothing. Like I'd flip over nothing, and I'd be like, well, it's all his fault. It's everyone else's fault. Why are they being like this? And you're like. Take a look at yourself, mate. You're yeah, the one yeah. like kicking off at everyone. So I remember a few years uh, before my main sort of 
similar to you sort of breakdown. I remember having a, a phone chat with um, Anders Ginge. Um, yeah, yeah. And he he was out at the time as well. He was just starting his uh, paramedic sort of course. And I remember sitting down having a chat with him. I, I remember saying, I think there might be something wrong with me. And he was like, why, what's up? And I went, well, I keep flipping out at the kids over nothing. And yeah. I keep arguing with Kate over nothing. And yeah. I don't understand what's going on. And he's like, oh, perhaps you should talk to someone else about it. And I was like, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'll be right. And sort of just yeah. pushed under the back burner until like, yeah, few years ago, when I actually yeah. finally admitted that I had a problem, yeah, and then got shit for it. <laughs> you got shit for it. Oh, I got shit. I've I've had shit ever since I started the podcast, mate. From really? from um, brothers in arms. Oh, mate, that's so sad. Like, is yeah. that do you reckon that's like a jealousy thing, or it's to be like, oh, oh dare you can go and do? Podcast. Yeah, I think I think so. Well, at one point, I don't, I don't, you might have seen a, I put a little clip up about it. At one point, it was um, rumoured that I started the... Uh, uh, no, I sold the story to the, the mail about the uh, mortars putting the fucking tube up the ass. <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, yeah, pa- apparently you um, you did it so you could fund your podcast. I was like, well, my podcast uh, is free. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm in a <laughs> shed. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen that video though. I got it sent on a WhatsApp just before it all blew up in the news. Yeah. But I still... <laughs> oh. If only people knew, if I... like that sort of shit happens on a weekly basis. Yeah, I know. You know? And uh, I remember I was, I was talking to Dunny about it, and I've said because uh... I was quite shocked by it. In, in yeah. a way, I was like, "Well, that's." That's a bit shocking, the fact that they were like fucking gobbing on his bum hole and sticking it all in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that is that is gross. And Dunny put, well, it's just lads being lads, isn't it? I was like, yeah, you got a point there. If they if they had seen all the other sort of shit that goes on. It's what what happens, isn't it? A group of fucking blokes with nothing to do on on But it it got into the wrong hands, mate. And look where it is now. It did. It got into my hands, apparently. Well, your hands. <laughs> <laughs> be ashamed. <laughs> oh, but again, why would I go to the papers with it? Yeah, I Spe- wouldn't. Speaking oh. of the podcast, though, what made you start the podcast then? Well, talking uh, with my brother, basically, and uh, we've always sort of enjoyed pop. We, we're big fans of like uh, Joe Rogan, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. a few others. And I remember sitting there and I said to him, I went, I'm thinking about starting it because I've tried writing down thoughts and feelings and, and what have you, uh, which is why I managed to finish the book in the end, which also got some shit, which is funny. Um, but I was like, I'm unable to articulate myself in writing because of my fucking dyslexia goes through the roof. And when I read when I read it back, it's like that makes no sense. Yeah. tell you what i'll do i'll record it and um i remember listening to mark Ormrod's podcast right. and he had a he had a saying at the beginning this it that this is his journey in his journal through life and i thought that's brilliant yeah. what an idea something yeah. that your kids can then listen back to so i thought fuck it i'm gonna do that and that's that's basically when i started it yeah oh nice after my uh breakdown in my uh kitchen is it helping you? Is it helping? Oh you? yeah, mate, definitely. It's a, it's one of those things that I actually a bit like probably when you go out into the into the field. Um, yeah. I look forward to having a guest on on the show to have a chat with. Yeah, it, it could be you, it could be my mate from back home in Hereford, or it could be some other fucking blue tick. Um, yeah, it's something that I I uh, look forward to, but it's not without its um little bits of anxiety that come through. I get like that nervous anxiety. It's like, oh, yeah, I can understand it, that, mate. I is this going to be any good? Is this going to be any good? Are people going to enjoy this? But then well, I think, to... but then oh. I think it's not, it's not for, well, it is for people to enjoy, but it's more for yeah. me to get like, just to talk because yeah, I, well, I, feel, I feel so much better afterwards. And then I'll go in and, I'll, and have fun with the kids and whatnot. Two, two sides of the coin. It gives people watching or listening like a real reality of just a conversation. You know, there's my, with, there's people that might be listening or watching this 
that think that pick something up and go, oh, I didn't think of that. Oh, I didn't know that. Or, yeah, and then yeah. you also feel better at the same time, which is, that's like me going out into the field, mate. I started recording the videos for they're me to look back. They're brilliant, mate. They're brilliant. For me they? to look back and go, oh, that was, a, that was a really good camp. And like, my sort of angle on there is just being genuine, mate. Like, I'm no ex. I don't claim to know everything. I don't claim to be any expert. I'm just going out, filming me doing what I'm doing, just having fun. And the reason why I love it is I get to take all them little snipery bits or whatever. Yeah, it's good, do. mate. I don't have to do stagging on. I don't have to do <laughs> mate, I'm there with all my beers. I've got a big fire. I'm like, woo! You know I mean? so, so you're morning like, admin, mate. Yeah, exactly. And I get ch- like... Go change your socks. I got get immense joy from it, and it was like seeing people start commenting and stuff. It like it's motivated me so much to keep going and keep doing it. Um, whereas before, like like I was saying, I just couldn't even be able to get out of bed some days, mate. You know, you know it is. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I I enjoy it, mate. I like I like looking through your little uh, your YouTube and things, and you've gone from like fucking nothing to getting quite big. In, in... It's slowly it's progressing which is awesome you know it's not like i say again it's not why i started but it, it motivates me more yeah, to it's, keep doing. it's mad isn't it how these like little little things that can bring so much joy to like yourself and and other people yeah. from doing it and yeah. it also connects you to to other yeah. other veterans that have got similar sort of um yeah outlooks on things and another another person who i i've noticed is starting to flourish with these different sort of avenues Fucking uh, Sam Brown is in yeah. uh, his, yeah. his garden, mate. His gardening is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll have to go and check that out. I, don't... I, I can't remember what it is. I think it's something like the bearded gardener, his, um, yeah, okay. his handle is, mate. And it, I was That's... like, I never pictured in my head that fucking Sam Brown was going to be doing fucking gardening. Yeah, I was like, I'm... this is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Well, and I've seen you've had some like pretty fairly big people on here as well. Like, yeah, I've had, I've had a few, and uh, I think the, the biggest people I've had have obviously been UFC fighters like um, Jack yeah. Shaw and, uh, and Mason yeah, Jones. Yeah. Yeah. And you find that they're actually just fucking normal people, which is brilliant. Like, yeah. like Mason, Mason um, sent me a message the other day. He's out in California at the minute um, in a fight camp. Yeah. And I was like, as if, like, a former two-weight Cage Warriors champion and now UFC fighter has just sent me a text just saying, I'm enjoying the sunshine in California. I was like, this is, <laughs> this is unreal. <laughs> well, what started happening on YouTube, like, I've had, like, three or four companies now message me on YouTube yeah, to yeah. my email and uh, they want it, they're like, have this tent, have this, have this, have this. Some of them are like, oh, we want a full review video. We want you to do this. We want you to yeah. do that. And I'm just like, well, like, if you, you've claimed to have watched my videos, my whole thing is I'm not going to be that guy that tries to push yeah. some shit. Yeah, I spend on people yeah, yeah, that yeah. I would never do myself. So, like, I'm now picking and choosing. I've just declined people just like, thanks, but no thanks. Or yeah, yeah. I go, that's really cool. I'd love to try that out. And if it's good, I'll put it up. But I don't want to be just this YouTube guy that's, like, flogging shitty camping. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? Yeah. And I, f- I find with those sort of things as well, you've got to be sort of on the same level of what they want and what you want, so that yeah. it's similar. Like, yeah. for example, I'm not I'm not sponsored by them per se, but they have sent me some gifts of um, yeah. their their oil, uh, which is a uh, infusion CBD. Yeah, yeah. Now, I I went around a few different companies asking them like what is their ultimate goal with all that sort of shit? Would you yeah. want to partner up and, and, and help the podcast? And a lot of them said no, because yeah. I had like, uh, like very few listens and very few followers and things like that. And they were like, no, nah, sorry, not getting behind you. Cause I'm not a name, but yeah. you were like, Oh no, I'd love to like help you grow your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. What can you do for us? I was like, well, I can shout you out at the beginning of episodes. I could talk about your products. Because yeah. I, I, I love C- CBD oil is brilliant, especially for me. I, I use um, yeah. their different muscle rubs and things like that. Nice. Because I've got, I got glass ankles, which I found yeah. out is actually hereditary, which I didn't realise. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, funnily enough, my old man has got glass ankles. Yeah. And he almost didn't become a PGI because he kept um, 
doing his ligaments in his ankles, just rolling. Like he'd be walking and roll his ankle for no reason, which is what I always yeah. do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and uh, their so muscle rubs and, and ligament sort of stuff really helps with my ankles and knees and all the other veteran fucking injuries. Yeah. But yeah, they, they were like, oh yeah, I'd love to work with you. Brilliant. And there's a, an energy drink. Um, it's like a, a natural energy drink. I've got a meeting with them next Friday to yeah. see if um, we can work together. So that, that's quite interesting. But nice. I always get the ones in the DMs that are like, hi, would you like to become an ambassador for this? And it's like, well, tell me more about you. What do you, what, yeah, what do, you do? And it's like, well, if you buy this product and you sell and you put your name on there, use your promo. And I was like, nah, I'm good. Cheers, mate. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Even, I don't even like that T-shirt. Well, this is the thing. It's just <laughs> got to pick and choose. Like, I didn't really, I never expected anything to come of this, mate. I thought I'd be that guy in like five years with like ten subscribers. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And like, yeah. just it's just steadily going up. Like, every time I put a video out, man, I'm, there's like a couple hundred more on there, and it's just like, yeah, I'd love to take your present, mate. But if it's shit, I'll tell you it's shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. It, if you're whatever's good or not but yeah yeah definitely mate. You know, I'm like picking and choosing people but a few of them i've just been like like yourself i just said yeah thanks mate but no thanks like yeah well, that's one of the reasons why i've basically stopped doing what i do like at the beginning i was like shouting out different veteran companies every fucking week like, yeah and then it got to the point like it was just me doing stuff for them and it's like are you not going to help me out or anything no okay cool i'll just continue to grow slowly on my todd it's not a problem yeah yeah and that's it yeah like you do this for a reason you do this for your mental health and i kind of do this for mine so yeah. it's like you need to remember what you're doing this for and it's that's not what it's all about yeah, definitely and uh, I, for like, yeah, I love the fact that you um your your little avenue that you go down is is to do with the outdoors because i think a lot of people under, underestimated the power of the outdoors until we oh, started 100%. going into these lockdowns. 100%. When we started doing these lockdowns, people were going, oh, oh, I loved going for a walk today. It's like, well, you weren't saying that like two months ago. Yeah, now it's the only thing you can do. You love it. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. Uh, the outdoors is fucking brilliant. I love it. And it is, I, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to take the girls out. I want them yeah. to be a bit older before I start taking them out properly. Yeah. And it's like going, <clears throat> being out in the being like staying out every because I do it once a week. Like yeah. if I do it once a week, I can kind of I'm like a happy guy at work. It's noticeable. Like I, I'm super chill, so that's why I try and get out at least once a week. And I, I like you really get in tune with nature, man. Like there's things you pick up and you spot and you see that you don't even think are there before. Well, you notice things a lot more because I started recording the videos in the winter. So like gathering all my wood and getting to the dry bits and all that, it was a long process. And you see, obviously, there's no leaves on the trees. You really feel how cold it is on the night time. And like now we're moving into in the middle of spring. Like you notice in all the new flowers, all the new buds, all the like. I know people see that anyway, but like oh, you even just, just ignore it really. You, you kind of ignore it, and you really pick out certain um, species of plant that like you just walk past it before and go, yeah, the floor's green, mate. <laughs> but, now, but now it's like oh look there's some some of this oh there's some of that oh look that's yeah. cool <laughs> you know, like get a little bit more in tune with what's actually going on yeah so do you going spend week, yeah. do you spend most oh. of the most of your nights that you're uh you're out are you in in thetford forest yeah i kind of go all over there's um like there's harlan forest which is like closer to this you've got thetford forest then i go up to Watton. there's a trail up there but then now I'm kind of getting to the point where I don't really need to be going to like these big thick woods. If there's a strip wood of like three or four trees deep and I think it's far enough off a dog walking track, like I'll just go there now. I just used yeah. it. And I think the more I do this, the more confident I get. I think as long as I look professional and like don't have kit everywhere, I'm very much still like if you're not using it, it's in the bag. Or, yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you, don't want a regiment. Fucking, you don't want a fucking admin explosion, mate. Exactly. I don't want like an empty tin of beans on that side of the camp and like a knife just like stabbed in a tree over there do you know what i mean um so i don't think as long as you look good and like act a little bit professional i've never actually been approached by anyone i've never been 
caught as it were because i do yeah. like i've got a mindset of like if it ain't a good position i won't use it like i'm still very much in that i know what i'm looking for yeah, when, yeah. I see it, when i got see good it, arcs mate yeah exactly when i see <laughs> it I know, and i'm always like oh well i'll set the tarp up this way because the track's behind me and they're not going to see you know and it's all yeah, very much I like, still like I'm looking for a like a proper observation post like do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. You need to get yourself a dog now as well or have you already got a dog? Yeah, that would be cool, wouldn't it? A little trail dog. Yeah, <laughs> a man, little wooden dog. Just have a little fucking span. <laughs> Take him out with you. Yeah. That, yeah good. They're good for your mental health as well, apparently. The yeah, old... well, I've got I've got a cat and a tortoise. I've got a cat, mate. She makes me I work. She makes me work for affection, though. Does she? I just want to Unless she wants something, like she. We were watching, uh, we were watching telly in bed last night. She just came and sat on my chest. I was like, I'm, I'm fucking trying to watch the telly, little shit. Yeah, it's all, it's all about now, them, isn't it, mate? now you want some loves. Yeah, but, that's it. But cats are so easy to look after. Though. Oh yeah, just, yeah. No, we literally no. leave, we leave a window open. Yeah. If we, if we're at work, and then she can get in and out of that. Yeah. And she's fucking golden, mate. She <laughs> br- br- brings us, brings us a treat every now and then. We've got a big open yeah. field to the rear of a rear of the shedio, big yeah. open field, and she, yeah, the the rats that she's brought back in. Yeah, fucking. Oh dead. man, I'm really sorry to uh, pick this up. But I was just <laughs> while you've been talking, I've just been looking at all the stuff behind you. Yeah, I really, I really, I really love the granite zero flag, mate. That's such a cool logo as well. Yeah, that that I I should um, <laughs> I I stole that. Um, <laughs> well, no, I, I spoke to a, a cartoon artist who does a lot of things for a, a podcast uh, that I enjoy called The Fighter and the Kid. And I sent him a message right. saying, could you design me a Granite Zero logo? Yeah. It's, um, basically, I'd like a cartoon ape wearing a, a, trucker, <laughs> a trucker cap with some headphones on. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, no problem. And he, he designed it, sent me the logos. And he went, yeah, I'd like... Um, Seeing as you're an ex-military, I'll, I'll do it for a hundred dollars. But I was like, yeah. "You've already sent me the logo, though, so yeah, I'm not paying you." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I love it. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, that's this, cool. This flag, this flag has been up Penny Fan. Has it? Yeah. Oh we, yeah, I remember seeing pictures. I remember seeing pictures of that. Yeah, me, me and my brother went up Penny Fan. Um, but yeah, I, I I like my ape. Obviously, you've got to have an ape. It's, got, yeah. it's, the, it's the rules, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. Speaking of getting up like mountain zone, me and uh, Joe, when uh, we got Simon, well, not we, when his parents got Simon's ashes back, we'd done the Three Peaks Challenge. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we'd done, done like Ben Nevis, Scarfell Pike and uh, Snowden. Um, but that was cool, man. Like, just talking about getting up to the top, that was like a really good thing for me and Joe to do because we hadn't really seen each other that much. And then we met yeah. up with all of our family and just like done the three peach salad. Mate, I was hanging to be fair, but it was more I drove between Snowden and Scarfell Pike. So we'd done the first one. I'd already done a 12 hour shift at work, then drove to Wales to start the challenge. <laughs> Jesus Christ, yeah. I know, and uh, so after like the first one, I got back in the car. We, was, <laughs> we were driving up the motorway, mate, and I was literally like that, mate. <laughs> So we pulled, we pulled in this random train station and got like, because we had a little support crew, like, yeah, yeah. Um, size mum and that was doing the food and stuff. So they come and picked us up in the minibus. I had to get the train back down there afterwards. But like doing that with Joe was a really cool little thing. We had a little bit of whiskey at the top, scattered some of size ashes over all three peaks, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. I think, because um, you, you guys were all, obviously, when you're, when you're in a on the squadron, you, you obviously have your little cliques and whatnot, and and you have yeah. your in, inter-flight sort of banter. You yeah. might have it like when I was yeah. when I was going to um, Kandahar. Obviously, a flight was quite quite close. Yeah, I like to say HQ was quite close, but I really didn't like anyone. Um, yeah. I sort of kept myself to myself, really. Um, but when you're literally a, a small section like the sniper section you, you guys yeah. are, are very very close so it must have been fucking like, i was devastated when si um yeah suicide but you guys must have been honestly mate it was gut-wrenching because like 
well, like you say, we were a small team and in between patrols, so I was recording his um, like trance album that he was doing. From <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got that. Yeah, so I'd go and sit in size little on his cot bed with him, man, and just like watch him work away at this album. And he'd just be saying, "Oh, listen to this. What do you think of that?" And it's just in, it's just crazy, mate. Like it's gut wrench. And I, I was chatting to Sai the night before it happened, mate. Like we were talking yeah. about. I play a lot of guitar and stuff, um, you know. And uh, I was, we were talking about microphones, mate. And he was like, "Oh, I've got this sure." whatever microphone it was he was like you can have it mate like and i said oh sweet man how's it all going and all that and he said well because he'd applied for the police he tried yeah, to get yeah. into durham police and like wasn't successful basically um so i think his direction was already sort of taking a little hit and he was yeah. saying like oh if it wasn't for my kids i'd probably just move over abroad to work and i was like and he goes but i've got the kids so i'm not going to go abroad so I was thinking, all mm. oh, right, like fair enough, mate. Like we've all got ideas of what we want to do if if the world was perfect, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, and it was like the next day, man, on the evening, I got the I got the call from Joe, mate. Um, I think Joe's parents had called Joe. So and it was just like it's just mad. It was just mad, mate. It was literally it's so cliche, man, but it's literally like losing a brother, mate. It's like losing yeah, a family yeah. member. Cause I so because I spoke to him, it, it would have been a couple of weeks before. I spoke to him. It was only through um, Facebook. I put a post up about um, the artist Jack Garrett because obviously he does yeah. he does everything, doesn't he? He, does, he sings, yeah. he does yeah. it all yeah. on the the, the yeah. whatever. And he and he replied saying, "Oh, Tomo, I think he's fucking brilliant." I was like, "He is, mate." I was like, "How are you doing?" Blah blah blah. And then um, I sort of left it at that. And I remember I, I was at work and I got a phone call from um, my missus telling me. She's obviously yeah. friends with uh size ex wife, yeah. And um, she she told me, and I was at, I was at, I was working for Loomis then doing the cash in transit, and yeah. I had to put I had to pull over, and I was like, Fuck, yeah. this is this is horrible, yeah, not good times. No, nah, it was horrible, mate. And but, like, on. but yeah, it was just fucking, but uh, again, it was one of those that n- nobody really fully knew. No, no, it's, it's the classic though, isn't it? Oh, no one saw it coming, but they don't, mate. And this is why, like I've mentioned in a couple of my videos, anyone struggling, really just speak to someone, let someone yeah, know. Yeah. Least, like, even if you're not at the stage where you think, I want to get help, at least talk to your pals, you know? Yeah. Which yeah. is hard because we've been in that situation, mate, and you don't, you just blink yeah. her off. Blink and it off. takes people to notice things. And it was like a row with my mum on the, the day of my grandma's funeral that, just open my eyes. It does, mate. There's certain things will will open your eyes. And my brother, his um, one of his best mates, um, took his own life. And my brother was with him again, similar to you. Um, yeah. Was with him though the the night before. In fact, he I think he might have been with him the the day of as well. And he remembers saying, "If you ever need to talk to me, just fucking any time, just phone me up." Because he knew yeah. that he was struggling. He knew he had um depression and whatnot my yeah. brother was saying that, that this time because usually he would just keep drinking and drinking and drinking until he passed out yeah but this time yeah. he didn't have an, that he didn't have enough alcohol yeah and he got to that stage and he was like well i'm just gonna do it then yeah that's fucking it's horrible mate not nice but yeah on a <laughs> that, that took a that took a that took a nice turn <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. That's all right, mate. Um, this, is a, this is a real conversation and a real chat, and that's not it. It is, mate. Sometimes all we need now is to do it in the evening, have a whiskey. Sometimes <laughs> we need to do it at 12 o'clock in the day. Yeah, mate. So, oh, mate. I remember having um, Luke Neeson on the show before. Yeah. And he's he, paramedic now, is he? Yeah, paramedic now. Yeah, he's, he's, doing, he's yeah. flying, mate. He's doing really well. Yeah. And I had him on the show, and we did literally. I, I call him Joe Rogan length podcast. It was like three hours long and I was yeah. fucking steaming. I must have had about, I must have had about eight fucking Budweiser's. Then I got on the whiskey and I was fucking, I don't even remember half the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah. Well, if we were doing this a lot later, I probably would have been on the beers, but I was on the black coffee this morning. Yeah. I was, I've been on the black coffee and the fucking uh, OJ. But yeah. <laughs> well, to be fair, I haven't. I haven't. It's been since since October. I haven't had any alcohol. 
which is quite funny because yeah. my missus is like, you know, people probably think you're an alcoholic and you're doing really well. So, like, yeah, mm, well, I'm not an alcoholic. Well, <laughs> for, for everybody enough. knowing, not an alcoholic, by the way. It's funny because obviously every single time I put a video up, it's there's like 10 ales in it. So because that's just a snippet of my week, like that's my night out going camping. Yeah, that's yeah. Like my, so I've obviously always got beers in the video, but anyone watching and now you watch video after video, they're like, is this guy an alcoholic? Like, yeah, I know, mate. Because cause like, obviously little things like my um, YouTube sort of documentary about my mental health issues is called yeah. Whis- Whiskey and Wrong Decisions. Yeah, like that's because I used to drink quite a bit. I wasn't alcoholic, but I would drink more with just to numb sort of feelings. Yeah, and um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm not an alcoholic, by the way. Yes, I like it. I like a whiskey every now and then, but yeah, you know. yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, but how was lockdown for you, by the way, mate? Lockdown didn't change for me. I was um because no, as as the as the site manager I had to be on site. Um yeah. and my site has got a uh, cancer research sort slash treatment center on it. Yeah. So no matter if all the other businesses shut down, that was always yeah. open. So I had yeah. I, we had to be there. So I've been doing that. Um but yeah. The kids doing homeschooling. To be fair, my my kids' school was was spot on with it. They they the te- they went on Microsoft Teams. They had it all set out, and it was it was spot yeah. on. And now, oh, uh, finally, fucking Zero Alpha, the long haired colonel, is finally back at work. <laughs> she's a hairdresser, so she's been out of work since. Oh, the- she must be killing her. Oh, mate, but she's like been fully booked all week. She to be fair, she only she's only worked four days which is Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Yeah. But she's, like, she brings home almost, like, my mum's wages in, like, fucking four days. It's like, <laughs> she was like, right, I'm flat out. I was like, good. Put it in yeah. the fucking savings. The savings is taking a hit. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. Well, I work in the food industry, so obviously nothing changed for me because yeah, yeah. all the machinery, what I do is fix all the machinery in food factories. So all the process and stuff, all the packaging machinery and stuff like that. So nothing's changed for me. I've just been wheeling because I've got this little trolley that my toolbox sits yeah. on with like a long handle and I just wheel it along, mate. <laughs> and I just wait, I wait for the phone to ring and someone's like, oh, can you come to this like packing room and fix this machine or whatever? And I'm just on standby, mate, just in a canteen with a coffee, mate. And every time the phone rings, I'll just go do my job, fix a machine, come back. So, yeah, it hasn't really changed for me either, to be honest. That's is is. Which it's is been, good. I'm it's been a wake up call though for for everyone. Yeah, oh, hundred percent. I know a lot of people really struggle with it because a lot of people need that interaction. They need yeah. people around them and stuff like that. So I can imagine for some people it has been really and hard. I, I totally agree, mate. And to be fair, with with the podcast itself, it hasn't really um, changed because most of my interviews I do via Zoom anyway, because and yeah. chat, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Because <laughs> I, I'm down in Kent, not many people. I'm not going to pay for people to come here to fucking sit in the shed yeah um it is set up for that but it's like that that's this is sort of my interaction which is which is fine um for me um but yeah like you said the amount of time that people need that sort of human interaction yeah it it does does make a fucking huge difference like yeah to be fair to i i went and played i had a kickabout with um dunny and shipper the other day which, yeah. is, which is quite handy. I've got a couple of fucking former gunners around the corner. Um, yeah, but yeah, we went for a little kickabout and just having a kickabout with these lads was fucking brilliant. Yeah. We, yeah. Weren't, sat, we weren't sat there talking about the fucking military in the good old days. We were talking yeah. about just fucking whatever. Yeah. Like you say, it's just like that little bit of back to reality again. Now everything's sort of nice. starting open, it is nice. opening up and you can see people and that. It's, it's the, nice. The, the, best, the best one for us was um, the day... I think it would have been the day after they said that you could start um, have mixing households and whatnot. We got we got yeah. in the car, mate. We we got in the car and we drove straight to Hereford to see my fucking dad, brother, mum, my niece. We only went for the day, right? It was yeah. a fucking long round trip that we did, but oh, <laughs> it was so nice just seeing my fucking oh, mum and dad and my brother. Yeah. Like I haven't seen him for like a year. Not yeah. that we're not that we're like fucking super close because i live in kent they live in hereford but 
you know, just seeing him, I was like, ah, oh, this is nice. And then I thought, yeah. ah, could have a beer, but I'm not drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I've been to the pub probably like four times since the pub opened yeah. again. <laughs> but I, I, you know, even just swinging in for a quick pint, mate, like that's enough for me. I like to just sit in the beer yeah. garden, you know. Yeah, it's, it's it's nice, isn't it? It is good, definitely, mate. Yeah. So what time's your barbecue? Got, probably with I'll probably light it in like twenty minutes, mate. So Imagine. I'm probably kind of good to go to sign off whenever now. Yeah, sweet, mate. So, but what kind of barbecue is it? Are you going all out with the steak? Kebabs. Oh yeah, I've got lamb. all. I've got, mate. I've even got some vegan stuff as well for people. I don't know because don't know. there are. I don't know who. People, I don't know these people that you're talking about, but <laughs> <laughs> they are out there, my friends. They are out there. I'm not one of them, but they are Definitely out there. Not, mate. They are, mate. They are. But mate, like you said, you need to. You need to shoot off. I need to. Well, my daughters have decided. They decided, by the way. That they want to go to the coast today, and I was like, "Where oh, do you want?" Nice. I was like, "Where do you want to go?" And they went, and they started f- throwing out fucking like Hastings, and I was like, "I ain't driving to fucking Hastings." <laughs> and I went, "Tell you what, we're going to Dover." Yeah, and they were like, yeah. "All right," and I went, "We could do a bit of history there as well." And she was like, yeah. "To be fair, my daughter loves everything about World War Two." Um, so I was like, well, we can go to the White Cliffs so you can see where the yeah. Germans were coming over and the Battle of Britain and all that. And she was like, "Oh yeah," oh, nice. so we're going to go and oh, smash mate, that out. Have- have an awesome afternoon and uh, really appreciate you having me on. Mate, mate. it's really cool. It's been a privilege. Privilege is all mine as always. Top man, Tomo. Nice one, mate. Cheers for coming on, mate. Cheers, dude. Speak to you soon, man. Catch you in a bit. Bye-bye. Bye.